and universals out in the stars. To get closer to God and to appreciate the galaxy and all its majesty. We grab jump to a few different systems. We are lucky to have some pilgrims who have never been off world. Seeing so many marvels can be a life changing experience. Space travel is dangerous, but fortunately, most ships don't engage us. Whether it's respect for our religious beliefs or the fact that we carry only passengers, I don't know. Have you ever felt something spiritual while traveling the stars? I've jumped dozens of times, and I still don't know I've had the revelation that Keeper Aquilus describes. But I'll keep jumping. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to offend. It was a pleasure talking with you. We have to be going. But I hope God watches over you out there in the stars. temporarily impounded. That's fine. Just make sure you take care of this soon. And don't get yourself in any more trouble. Our records show you have some fines to clear up. Want to take care of that now? All contraband will be confiscated and your ship temporarily impounded. Now that's fine. Just make sure you take care of this soon. And don't get yourself in any more trouble. Worlds like this. I am satisfied to see the enemy combat. What an incredibly beautiful. 
beautiful sculpture. Hmm. I suspect it was placed here for some sort of specific purpose rather than as an artistic statement.
crew accounted for. We are ready to depart. You have my attention. This death is a joke. They haven't caught us yet. I'd be lying if I told you I was comfortable setting foot on this station.
You might find a deal or two here. If you can overlook the spatters of blood covering all the stolen goods, <laughs> of course. in hand, the future is looking bright. I think so. I figure my new Atlantis contacts are all burned now that the fleet are in the headlines. For now, the plan is to stay here, build some connections, and maybe in a few years I'll get back into the smuggling business. But the ship still works, so if you ever need to hitch a ride, me and my crew would be happy to oblige. I'll probably stick to gathering intel. All the yo-ho-ho -ho and other pirate bluster isn't my style. But that doesn't mean I won't drink a pint with my fellow swashbucklers to celebrate our victory. Most days, though, I prefer a cup of tea. Goodbye. Hey, Cap. You hiring? Got some baddies on my tail, and I need a place to lay low. Boy, am I glad to hear that. It's the Varun zealots who are after me. I don't give up easy. I'd be done for if they saw my ship out in the space lanes. If the Varun zealots don't sound like a problem to you, then I can't wait to see what you're made of. Wouldn't be much of a smuggler if I wasn't willing to cut a deal, would I? I'll tash it out. That's true. In my experience, the right offer is always worth waiting for. The best crew doesn't come cheap. I know a bad deal when I see one. I won't go that low. Sure, fine by me. I'm looking forward to the adventure.
Sounds like a plan. Let's catch up later. Thanks again for the save. This station is well outside my wheelhouse. You'd best do all the talking. Bog's Grog is fine if you like Team Moonshine. I don't know about you, but I think the welcome. Like I like my coffee. Scalding. How can I be of service, Captain?
again. <laughs> Do you remember the emissary, perhaps? And their ship, the Helix? I believe they ambushed you above Neon and demanded that artifact you worked so hard to gain. Thank you for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. Yes. Let's talk about what really matters. The unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. Not a relatively expendable Dusty anymore, are you? Look at where you've ended up. I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> this universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts. And the hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe. And the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the unity. When I stepped into it, I became a starborn. That's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. I have to. This is bigger than all of us. <laughs> All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the unity. In every universe, the starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the temples, the anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. Twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. 
I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? Say what you really mean. That if what you're seeing is true, that means anyone can act the way I do. See things how I see things. You say I can't be the same man as Aquilus. You're really just talking about yourself. The real monster lives within us all, doesn't it? You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. truce between all three of us give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want mine or the hunters yes let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules just remember one of us isn't trying to judge you
I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary. To decide what to do about you. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. Sure you have more questions? Ask. I know we're not the same people we met in our universes. Still, it's good to see you again, old friend. Different. I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again. As yours won't have its real me. It's not an easy experience to describe. But the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? seen the terror the hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever is in their way. When all the artifacts are assembled, the vice they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn.
is all I ask. I hope you see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure that they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. I knew you'd get bored without me. Hell of a city, isn't it? There's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. Two of us make quite the pair, eh? Oh, I love our little chats. You know how to make a woman feel special. Look at this place. It's just as we left it. You know, I've often wondered who keeps the lodge so meticulously clean. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. It can't be. Our colleague is alive in some alternate dimension? A am I hearing this right? Let's take a step back. This is everything we've been building towards, and the implications are... a lot to take in. Could you explain the part about multiple universes one more time for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail.
And that's why the Starborn want the artifacts so desperately. They're the keys to unlocking the infinite. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I know this has been a lot for everyone to take in, but we finally have answers. Let's make the best of them. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. Can we get a moment? Can we talk? These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Starborn. Aye. The Blackest Sea seems less of a concern when there are sharks leaping out at you. Catch a smile out there. Any day you make it through is a victory in my book. What the hell? With Crix's legacy, I thought for sure you were gonna turn it over to Sis Death. Instead, delivering an insane fortune to the Crimson Fleet? Why'd you help them? Those backstabbing, bloodthirsty idiots? I mean, Sistef are no angels, but really? With all those damn credits, the fleet is gonna be a literal plague for years. Hell, decades. Anyone that travels space is gonna be in danger. That includes people like Sarah, Barrett, the whole gang. You know, our people. Did you even think about that? I mean, really being forced to know them? Maybe. But they are plenty bad enough. I've done things I'm not proud of, but I've never, never done anything like this. Till now. I... I just can't stand to look at you right now. As much as I love uncovering new questions, I wouldn't mind a few answers now and then. Ever since I got here, this has felt like home. These people are family. I hope it feels that way for you too. Anything I can learn from is a help. You mean what could be the biggest discovery in the history of humanity? Yeah, I've got some thoughts. Scans are still inconclusive, but I think we've seen enough to know that we're dealing with something potentially even more unusual than the artifacts. There are so many questions beyond just who are they? How did they find you? How do they know about the artifacts? Why has no one ever seen them before? They did openly threaten you, as I understand it. I'd say that's something to worry about. It was one thing when this was just about us investigating the artifacts. Uh, a weird phenomenon that didn't come with creepy threats or questions about aliens or whatever it is that's going on now. I know we'll figure it all out in the end. It's just kind of a lot right now. It's silly, but I can't stop thinking about the idea that there are more of me out there. Even just one more Noel is crazy to consider, but dozens, hundreds, an infinite number of them? How different might they, m might we all be? Am I not even remotely the unique individual I thought I was? My head is spinning just considering it. Well, I'm glad you seem so certain of that. I'll admit, I'm not that sure at all.
Stay safe, okay? Sorry, was just doing some math in my head. Trade the gabs with you. Hello. I am satisfied to see that you survived your most recent sleep cycle. Human understanding of physics has, until now, shown no indication that such a thing is possible. And yet, we have now encountered two individuals physiologically identical to unique humans we already know, possessing knowledge and technology that it seems improbable for them to otherwise have. It is indeed possible that they are telling the truth that this unity does exist. More data is required. Practically speaking, it is entirely possible to duplicate my memory banks and replicate my functionality in another Model A unit. I would recommend speaking to Mr. Stroud about the costs of such a venture. Do you require assistance with your items? Travel safely. off right away or do you need a little bit of time? Hey there. What's up? Thought you'd never ask, Cap. Gagarin Landing. Your average dead in mining town. The economy's crap, planet's hostile, locals don't like strangers. You get the drill. Not exactly New Atlantis. I grew up on the street with a handful of other orphans. We got by on pickpocketing and scamming passing pilots at the local market. Wasn't it a bad life, really? Street living was tough, but I liked it there. My gang and I had lots of good times. If the smuggling bug hadn't bitten me, I might have grown old on Gagarin. Shut 
sure, might retire there someday. But that's a long ways off. I'll make do with the occasional visit for the time being. Nope, not a clue. They left me in a box outside Chunks when I was a baby and haven't tried to find me since. They didn't even bother to give me a name. People just called me kiddo until I was old enough to pick something different. They're the finest group of vagabonds in the settled systems. None of us had stable families, so we stuck together on the streets for safety. Some left when we grew up, but those of us who hung around became the terror of Gagarin. By the time we were teenagers, there wasn't a clean record among us. We drove security mad for years between the stealing, the vandalism, and the griffs we pulled off. <laughs> Good times. Sorry to hear that, Cap. I've seen enough of the settled systems to know I hit the jackpot as far as a childhood on the streets goes. I wish you had too. Your garden's an acquired taste, I'll give you that. That's what I like about it. Been a while now since I got into the business. First hopped in a Trade Authority ship at 18 and I've been working the space lanes ever since. I was lucky enough to work with one of the best smugglers in the galaxy right from the get-go. We made tons of credits scamming and running contraband together. She retired a couple years back and passed her operation on to me. Been flying solo since. Not nearly as much fun, but I, I make do all right without her. Oh, Caitlin's got a real interesting story. She comes from a rich family and her parents had a thing for collecting ancient art. She was set to inherit a fortune when she grew up, but life with a silver spoon didn't suit her. She ran away from home as a teenager to start smuggling. Knowing her now, you'd never guess she came from money. She's as rough around the edges as I am, but she never lost her taste for expensive stuff from Earth. <laughs> I tried to scam her. Some buds and I used to steal cargo from the Gagarin spaceport and sell it back to its owner for a higher price. Most people fell for it, but not her. Instead of a handful of credits, she showed up to meet us with two armed spacers to demand her goods back for free. I stepped in to negotiate, got them to drop the guns, and even managed a few credits for the stuff. Caitlin was so impressed that she offered me a job on the spot. She has a large book collection. Her prized possession was a book called Paradise Lost that she came across by chance in Aquila City. Personally, I never got through more than a few pages, but to each their own. She insisted it was brilliant, and she's a hell of a lot smarter than me. I always told her she took it for granted. If I'd been born with money like that, I'd have been lazy my whole life. But she's a free spirit. Oh, jeez, listen to me going on. All this reminiscing's got me feeling like a real sap. Mainly drugs and contraband tech. My partner Caitlin also had a thing for Earth antiquities. Books especially. When we could get our hands on the real thing, we sold them to collectors who were rich and powerful enough to keep law enforcement's eyes off our operation. When we couldn't get real ones, we forged them. Caitlin was great at it, we ran that scam for years and never got found out. She did, but I made plenty of my own too. Caitlin's too smart to get wrapped up in a mess like I'm in with the zealots. She'd kick my arse if she found out. It was. Damn good thing this job turned out to be a decent substitute. I might have split by now if it wasn't, Varun zealots or not. Anything else you wanted to ask me? Have Miss small talk. I could do this all day. Bad call on my part, honestly. I ran into a group of them at a spaceport and thought I'd try my hand at stealing some stuff from one of their ships. House Varun's stuff sells for a pretty penny to the right people, but it's hard to come by. The zealots caught me red-handed and chased me out of town. They've been on my tail ever since. Can't go a week without getting shot at. That's why I was hanging at the quay when we met. Only place I felt safe, really. Only stories. I've heard they're a religious cult that worships something called the Great Serpent. 
It's supposed to live in the stars or something. Their leader's supposed to have dreamed the whole thing up during a grav jump. Guess he had some hallucination where the Great Serpent spoke to him. Don't know if any of that's true, though. No one I know's had a conversation with one of them. Cap, no one's a fan of those nut jobs. I don't know many spacers who could survive a close encounter with a Varun ship. They're lethal. Most people who hang out at the last Nova walk around armed, that's all. Figure that would give me a better shot at survival if the Zealots came calling. Tch, doubt it. The Zealots are unforgiving to say the least. Guess that means you're stuck with me, eh? If you want to go for it, be my guest. Just ditch my ass at the closest bar first, will you? It's nothing short of a miracle that they haven't killed me yet. I'm not interested in tempting fate. Now let's talk about something else. My skin's starting to crawl. Thanks for chatting, Cap.
Things have been difficult. The mantle of the Mantis is a heavy burden. But you can do so much good. The spacers and pirates need someone to fear. Someone to check them. To make them realize some lines cannot be crossed. You have it in you, Leon. I know you do. Stay sharp. Focused. Just a little further. Don't leave any of that behind. I have something I need to discuss with you. Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well, there's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. I don't know where to begin. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. 
Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Yes, that's exactly right. Humans are clearly a victim of their own success. We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rushed curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. It certainly is. Without curiosity, our motivation to explore would vanish. But in this case, there's a difference between exploring the cosmos and blindly entering the unknown without being prepared for the consequences. Well, look what's happening right now. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. Oh, absolutely. Their arrival in our universe is much too timely to be for any other reason. It's also clear that the need to collect these artifacts are an obsession for them, almost bordering on an addiction. That leads me to wonder what the Unity has done to their minds and their souls. Yes, I agree, but not at the expense of erasing our own existence. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? This goes well beyond the boundaries of simple exploration. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely... evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, will essentially cease to exist. The honest truth is that... Well... <laughs> you're the love of my life, and... I can't bear to lose you. I'm not sure. I'm guessing based on what we've learned. Even if I accompany you into the Unity, the question still remains. Would we know each other anymore? Even if we did, would we care? Part of what I do, as Chair of Constellation, is weigh the costs of our expeditions. And this one... Oh, the cost is extremely high. I do love you. That's why this decision is... tearing me apart. Listen. I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown. I... I don't know if I'm ready to make that leap, but knowing we'd be doing it hand in hand would certainly make it more comforting. Well. I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> I'm getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will.
see if they've got any weapons or ammo. Until I go to mom's secret spaces. space on Denabola 1B. 
And she ends not with an I love you or an I'm proud of you. No. Six Semper Tyrannus. Oh my god. Always with that stupid Latin saying. Over and over she'd say that damn thing. Thanks, Mom. Thanks oh so much. Don't shoot! I am unarmed! Look, we can help each other. I can be useful. Just don't kill me. Livy, and I mean you, uh, no harm. This place was full of traps. Traps everywhere. I removed them. But this, this corridor is just too dangerous. See? Looks normal. One step inside, slam! You are trapped. And nobody's been standing after the doors reopen. No, sorry. If I tell you that, then I lose my leverage. They're ingenious. Took a, a lot of lives to tease them out. It's true. So many of my crewmates are gone. And this corridor is the worst. But I figured it out. There are letters on the floor. It is a grid. Those letters must spell something. But there are so many words or small phrases. Five? Six? It's hard to find... Uh, volunteers. I really thought we had it with M. Mantis. Ah, oh, poor Fred. Nobody else here figured that out. See? I've been helpful. You... you could let me go. Or better, I can help. I know these traps. I know how this mantis thinks. Please, let me help. And just give me a taste of the cachet inside. You can trust me. I like to think of myself as a merciful person. And I love giving people the benefit of the doubt. 
But I don't know about this one. Spoken like a true spacer. You won't regret this. I will hold back here. And, well, good luck. There's a huge difference between being prepared and carrying too much.
so many of us. has been a bounty hunter for decades. Imagine the treasure.
done. Just be careful. There will be traps, robots, only turrets. Very dangerous. I am sorry I could never show this lair to you. The lair is a secret that's been passed down for over a hundred years. And there are rules. You remember when you were a teenager? All the training, the drills, all of it was to prepare you for this. I know you have it in you, Leon.
This area is off limits. You need to leave. This area I am opening fire. Drop some of that rubbish already.
Free for 200 years, and this city is the best the Collective can come up with? Anything I can help? You should inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple landing. Sure, how about it?
do your business quick. The Rangers plan on dropping by for an order soon. I'll say right up front that if you're short on credits, I can't help you. Any more charity cases, I'll go out of business. How about I just show you instead of tell you? Explain that I do not need permission. I, I came to you in the spirit of cooperation, but if this is the reaction. And it is always working. Always! Why are you trying to fix something that ain't broke? Mr. Wilson, we can deal with the ash to better, safer. We didn't turn down fire or the space flight because we'd managed just fine until that point. I will not be talked down to like Okay, Miss Alpin, please don't take any further action until we've had some time to think this over. All right? We need to be smarter, better in the way we handle the Ashta. Heritage Museum. I offer a brief tour and I'm happy to discuss the city's history as well. Let me see. Oh dear lord. It's real. It, it still exists. This is the original charter for Aquila City. And you can see their signatures. This is really the birth of the Free Star Collective. The core philosophy of limited government and inalienable rights all here thank you if you find anything else please come back the museum is always open to you 